Welcome back, folks. The U.S. and the U.K. have announced sanctions against the Palestinian-run website Gaza Now and its founder over its alleged support of Hamas. In its filing, the U.S. Treasury Office claims Gaza Now began fundraising on behalf of Hamas following the October 7th terror attack. The sanctions block Gaza Now and its founder, Mustafa Ayash, from accessing American property or bank accounts and bars them from doing business with Americans. Gaza Now has an X account with more than 300,000 followers, as well as a large following on Telegram. Meanwhile, the relationship between President Biden and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is said to be strained over Israel's plan to launch a full-scale offensive in Rafah. Netanyahu claims a siege of Rafah is key to rooting out Hamas's senior leadership, and he says victory for Israel could be just weeks away. We've killed the many senior leaders, including number four in Hamas, number three in Hamas. We'll get number two and number one. That's victory. Victory is within reach. It's a few weeks away. President Biden, however, has reservations about the Rafa offensive. In fact, according to his own national security advisor, Biden told Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu it would be a, quote, mistake now, the tensions that have been simmering between both men have boiled over after Netanyahu canceled plans to visit Washington for a meeting on Rafa. That announcement came shortly after the U.S. refrained from vetoing a U.N. Security Council resolution calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. Today, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre insisted that the meeting will be rescheduled and that Rafa is at the top of the priority list. Uh, the Prime Minister's office uh, has agreed, has agreed uh, to reschedule the meeting dedicated to Rafa. So we're, we're uh, now working uh, with them to set, to find a convenient date uh, that's obviously going to work for both sides. Rafa obviously was part of the, part of the agenda, uh, their military operations. Uh, and so I'm not going to go into detail. It is important that we have heard from the Prime Minister's office that we are going to reschedule uh, and try to lock in this meeting. But while the U.S. and Israel work to find common ground on an offensive strategy, the situation on the ground in Gaza is deteriorating. The World Health Organization says famine is, quote, imminent, with more than a million Palestinians facing catastrophic food scarcity. The U.N. is accusing Israel of intentionally slowing aid delivery at Gaza checkpoints. And the food scarcity is hitting Gaza's most vulnerable population particularly hard. The Hamas-run health ministry says at least 27 children have died of malnutrition and dehydration in the past few weeks. I'm joined now by Scripps News Tonight medical contributor Dr. Omar Awan. Dr. Awan, it's good to have you. You talked about what's happening to the children in Gaza in your Forbes column this week, specifically how sustained malnutrition and dehydration impact their bodies. What are some of the short-term effects of going without vital nutrients for so long? Well, what happens, Christian, is that when the body is in a state of starvation, the body prioritizes survival over growth. So, you know, obviously that means that children are going to have stunted growth. That means low body weight, shorter heights, and ultimately can really affect every part of the body. So in the starvation state, the body breaks down sugars, carbohydrates, even muscle. And the heart, as you know, is muscle. So when the heart's muscle gets broken down, that means that the heart can't pump blood effectively and efficiently to the rest of the body. It can also affect the brain. So the brain, as you know, needs nutrients, minerals, vitamins to survive. And when it doesn't get that, then a child can't think properly. A child can't uh, undergo adequate problem solving. A child can't, uh, you know, be able to you know, use their brain or use their mind to do well in school or in a job later on in life. So, you know, definitely, you know, starvation can have very serious and detrimental effect on a child's health. Mm, very dire consequences going without food for so long. There is hope that more aid will be allowed to enter Gaza and that children at risk will get the help they need. But as you write in your column, even if these children get the aid they need right now, there could be long-term health effects. Could you expound on that for just a bit? Absolutely. So I think, you know, with long-term effects, 
you know, there are physical effects. So, for example, there have been studies that looked at children in the Chinese famine in the 1950s and 60s. And those children that were exposed to famine, even for a short period of time, had increased risk of being hospitalized for heart failure even later in life. Uh, compared to those that weren't exposed to the famine. And these are for reasons that we don't necessarily know and understand right now. But even beyond the physical aspects of health, Christian, there's the mental health aspects that we often don't talk about. So, you know, starvation, malnutrition is associated with depression, anxiety. And we know that depression is associated with you know, suicide, substance abuse, and shorter lifespan. So, and this can last a lifetime. And this is, it's devastating that, you know, these kids who have nothing to do with this war can have their lives completely changed and completely altered from something that can be completely prevented by giving humanitarian aid and potentially having a ceasefire. Mm. Researchers at Johns Hopkins estimate as much as 46% of children in Gaza between six months and five years old could be suffering malnutrition by August. Is the malnutrition risk in children greater than in adults? And if so, why is that? Well, it is, to some extent it is. Now, the good news is, is that the body is very resilient, right? So if you give the body mm. nutrients, you know, and you give them vitamins, then, you know, ultimately the body will fight back and will be able to function adequately and normally, you know, quite frankly. But as we just said, that there are long-term effects that, will never be solved and will never get better. And a lot of this has to do with, you know, the post-traumatic stress disorder, the depression, the anxiety, and the longer that lasts, the more amplified that is. So obviously a child who experiences this, you know, will have to live a longer period of life with depression, anxiety, uh, and, and those have a mental health disorder. So this is why it's even, it's critical that we get the help that we need to these children who have hopefully a long life ahead of them. And, you know, it's, it's very heartbreaking to see that this is happening to them. And hopefully the world can come together to put a stop to this. Scripps News Tonight medical contributor, Dr. Omar Wan. Many thanks for joining us as always. We appreciate you. My pleasure. Thanks, Christian.